हेलो हाई एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल लिटिल अंडर रेटेड ओप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल टूडे वी आर गोना चेक आउट एन अदर वीडियो ऑफ अक्षत टाइटल्ड एज थ्री बेस्ट म्यूचुअल फंड्स फॉर सेल रेट पीपल सो एज लाइक दिस वीडियो आई थिंक इज इन द परस्पेक्टिव दैट सेल रेट पर्सन डो नॉट हैव मच टाइम टू इन्वेस्ट इन द मार्केट और कीप दैम सेल्स अपडेटेड रिगार्डिंग द मार्केट न्यूज you know rise and fall of the companies or uh, something going good or bad within the management right so the best way for them to invest in the stock market is to directly invest in the mutual funds rather than directly investing into equity so that a fund manager can manage their funds so in video i think akshat is going to talk about three best mutual funds they might be uh, belonging to three different uh, categories fund categories so let's see which ones uh, he recommends and why uh, let's jump to the video please do not look at the fact that you know what okay last 3 years kagar has been this so therefore i will continue to invest there is a very small correlation between past performance and future performance of a mutual fund so because of this upswing in certain sectors sometimes these sectoral funds do very well and sometimes they just tank so please be little bit aware and conscious hi everyone welcome to today's video so did you know that as per sebi there are roughly 1500 mutual funds in india these are divided into roughly 40 categories so the reason why i'm telling you this interesting fact is very simple that picking mutual funds these days is becoming as complex as picking stocks so i thought that i will shoot a simple video wherein you can go and pick mutual funds systematically using data yourself without getting confused how will you do it i'm linking an excel spreadsheet and i will walk you through this spreadsheet where entire dynamic systems have been inbuilt you need to go filter things out as per the indicators you consider to be important and you will get a mutual fund list that you could consider investing in this might be a great option for people who systematically invest in mutual funds on sip basis that is that they get their salary and then they direct a certain portion of that salary into certain mutual funds so this entire excel spreadsheet can help you out in terms of researching these mutual funds better couple of important disclaimers number one this is not a sponsored video why because this has been sponsored by my company which i run which is called as wisdom match we run very good investment related courses the link is in the description box and you can check it out second key point some of you have asked me to share my understanding of some good mutual funds so i will take some names along the way those are not the sponsors of this video because i'll be taking names of multiple companies here on top of that i myself am telling you very very categorically that i do not invest in mutual funds in traditional sense i only to index investing when i have to invest in mutual funds and majority of my investments almost 90 95% plus is done through direct equity purchase so that is my style of investing very very categorically putting it out so with those disclaimers out of the way let me do three things number one let me talk about very basic stuff because some people might not be the regular viewers and they might be watching this video for the first time so you can consider skipping this section in case you understand the basics of the mutual fund second i will take you through the excel spreadsheet and teach you how you can filter mutual funds as per your style of investing and as per the portfolio that you are looking to grow third and finally i will talk about three mutual funds that i consider to be good and if i were to invest my salary today which three mutual funds i will pick and why so let us get the discussion started and first and foremost let me take you through the basics of mutual funds there are 100 different basics but i'll explain five very important basics so first let us understand the difference between a stock and a mutual fund a stock is also called as equity so it could be difference between equities and mutual funds or or stock and mutual funds so very quickly let us pick an example so let's say that if i am buying a stock called as itc then what is it that i'm directly doing i am buying a company so i am directly going and purchasing a part of a business directly this is not mutual fund this is stock or equity on the flip side a mutual fund what it does is that it has a collection of different assets for example it could have itc it could have hul it could also have hdfc bank so minimum there will be two assets in a mutual fund and maximum can be limitless so a A mutual fund is nothing but a briefcase. That's it, right? So that's what a mutual fund is. When you are purchasing a mutual fund, you are getting an ownership in all the assets that are a part of that mutual fund. 
So I hope this first basic point is clear that what is the difference between equities and mutual funds. Who manages the mutual fund? These are the mutual fund managers who manages the mutual fund. What exactly do I mean when I say that they manage the mutual fund? So basically they are buying and selling equities or whatever the underlying asset of that mutual fund is. Now second key point that you need to understand about mutual fund is the difference between direct and growth plan. Please directly go download an app, any mutual fund buying app. I'm not going to talk about which app. You can use whichever app you are comfortable using and you need to go and buy the direct plan. So that is the categorization of mutual fund that you need to buy. For example, if you are talking about a mutual fund, SBI blue chip mutual fund, then you buy the direct plan of it, not the growth plan. Why? Because there is no difference between the two except for the fact that in the growth plan, the commissions are higher. So please remember this point. Very, very important point. I have helped you save some money. The third key point that you need to understand is the duration of the mutual fund. For example, some funds categorically say that, hey, if you are investing in our mutual fund, please keep a time horizon of three to five years. So please be considerate about the duration. Please don't start timing your returns from tomorrow onwards. That is a pointless exercise. Some mutual fund managers say that we try to optimize the short term or momentum based performance of our mutual fund. So there you should be considerate about the short term performance. Now comes point number four that what types of mutual funds are there. There are multiple types so I will not be able to cover all of them but I will talk about some basic things. One would be that if the underlying asset is of equities then this is called as equity based mutual fund right so that's point one. A related point here would be that it could also be debt. So debt means loans. So if the underlying structure of the mutual fund is that they are only investing in debt, then it becomes a debt mutual fund. There are also hybrid mutual funds. Hybrid is a combination of debt plus equity. On top of that, there are sectoral funds and you know, 100 different types of funds. So I will not be able to go through every single type. But when we talk about the Excel spreadsheet, I will outline some of the key points there. Fifth and finally, people get super swayed by the returns of a mutual fund. For example, last year, this Fanala Dinka mutual fund gave 25% return. So this year also, it is going to give similar returns. No, the past historic return of a mutual fund is no guarantee that in the future also, that mutual fund is going to perform. This is something that you need to keep in mind. Yes, the positive part is that maybe the fund manager is good. And if the fund manager has not been changed, then it gives you more hope that this mutual fund is being run very intelligently, sensibly, etc and you might be able to make money through it. Please do not look at the fact that you know what, okay, last three years CAGR has been this, so therefore I will continue to invest. There is a very small correlation between past performance and future performance of a mutual fund. So with these disclaimers out of the way, let me move to step two where I will show you the entire Excel spreadsheet, how you can use filters in it and scan mutual funds that might fit with your portfolio or style of investing. So this is the entire mutual fund list. So you can go scroll through this list and take a look at almost 250 mutual funds that are listed here. Now I will explain you the quick parameters here and then I will talk about how you can go about filtering mutual funds that fit with your investing style. So you can see a few key columns. One year return is one, three year return, five year return. What is the expense ratio? So very quickly, what is an expense ratio? Expense ratio means the amount of money charged by the mutual fund manager in order to manage the fund. For example, if we are looking at Motiwal Oswal Medicap 30 fund direct plan, then the expense ratio is roughly 1%. So whatever money you are giving to Motiwal Oswal fund, 1% of that money would be deducted on yearly expense basis most likely to manage that mutual fund. Is this 1% good? What should be the expense ratio, etc, etc? That's an entirely different discussion. But generally speaking, anything less than 1% is considered to be okay right so that's what i would say that is my personal opinion i do not like to pay so much commission so i directly invest in index funds if at all i'm investing in mutuals but other people also have their perspective their viewpoint is that you know what mutual fund managers know a lot of stuff they are able to beat the market all that stuff so therefore we should give our money to professional managers they might be able to generate more returns i personally do not believe in that philosophy so coming back to the excel spreadsheet so you can take a look at one year return three year return five year return what is expense ratio i have explained risk what is the meaning of risk risk simply means the per amount or per unit of risk that is associated with the mutual fund well there are multiple methods of doing it one method is called as the beta method it aligns with the volatility of the stock you don't need to get into the math behind it so let me give you a practical example so let's talk about two options option one option two option one is that you invest in a small cap company and you make a return of 15 percent okay this is option one option two i give you is that hey you invest in nifty and you make a 15 percent return which option will you pick you will say that hey returns are same in both 
so either of the options i don't care no your answer would be incorrect simply because of the fact that in option 1 you are taking higher amount of risk so that is what the meaning of risk in market means this is measured by something called as beta i'll make a separate video on that but i hope you get the picture what is the meaning of risk when we are talking about risk category here and return is very obvious that this is the alpha or the absolute return generated by the mutual fund for example again if we take a look at aditya birla sun life then its one year period return was roughly 25% 3 year was 10% 5 year was 5.12% so if the return here is stated as high what does it mean it means that in its own category its returns are higher so i hope all these constituents are clear now how you can go and filter things out so here you can see it says create a filter so you just simply go there and let's say that you are a short term investor and you want to do momentum investing in mutual funds what is momentum investing it simply means that you are trying to invest in funds that are playing the short term markets and they are usually giving high returns in the short term so we will go by that so here what you do is that you go here and you sort out by high to low so z to a means high to low and a to z means low to high so let's sort by z to a and you can see that motilal oswal one year return has been quite good and it has been doing some wonderful things on the flip side let's say that you are interested in a time horizon of 3 years so again what you do is that you sort out by high to low so here the dynamics change here you have to go this because for some funds it was not available so you start from here it is called as quant small cap fund so its 3 year return has been quite high similarly if you are interested in the 5 year performance again go and sort by z to a again the dynamics would change you go down and here you will see this right so sbi magnum income fund so these are some of your options so you go play around with this excel spreadsheet and figure out funds that make the best sense for you what i would say is that number one please do not aggressively study the past performance of a specific fund especially if the mutual fund manager has changed or is about to be changed this is a very very important point how will you figure out the information about a mutual fund i will show that to you in the next section of the video number 2 point please take a look at the fund's name for example here you can see sbi small cap fund so small cap means what small cap means small companies now if you are investing in small companies then of course the return that you are supposed to make should be high there is no point in investing in small companies and getting returns that you will get by investing in nifty that makes no sense because you are taking higher unit of risk in this particular option and you get this information through the name of the fund itself now comes point number 3 that please understand the fund type for example i would generally avoid investing in hybrid funds because the expense ratio is very high so let me show that to you so here we go we use the filter z to a this is 2.45 so this is a sectoral fund so sectoral funds also usually have a very high expense ratio so for sbi sectoral fund sectoral fees for example infra sector or pharma sector or it sector so that involves a lot more charges in case you want i'll make a separate video on sector specific funds what sectors you should be buying what sectors you should be avoiding in case you are interested in sectoral funds but yes the advantage is that sectoral mutual funds can give you very high returns if the sector is on an upswing for example these days the real estate sector seems to be going up now this is not an investment advice that go invest your money in sectoral mutual funds associated with housing and all that no i am just giving an example so because of this upswing in certain sectors sometimes these sectoral funds do very well and sometimes they just tank so please be little bit aware and conscious and understand what you are investing into similarly you can see taurus infrastructure fund this is 2.14 so this is parag parik flexi cap so flexi cap means that hey you can switch between small cap mid cap large cap companies so typically hybrid flexi cap and sectoral funds have high expense ratio so please understand before investing into these funds that the expense ratio is going to be high you should be doing it should not be doing it that's a separate discussion altogether but i just wanted to highlight this point so now let us speak about the third section where i will speak about three mutual funds that i consider to be good again not an investment advice but i am picking these mutual funds because they give me some kind of diversification and i will at least teach you how to analyze these and again you can go back to the excel spreadsheet whichever mutual funds look good to you you can run the same analysis on these different mutual funds and take some positions in case you are investing via mutual funds so the first mutual fund that i would look closely into is called as parag parik flexi cap so why do i like this mutual fund simply because it is giving exposure to both indian markets and global markets so it's a very well diversified so just to give you some idea these are the constituents and top 10 holdings of this mutual funds and you can see that it has itc which is a defensive stock 
it has bajaj holding which is a slightly aggressive stock it has microsoft google which are international companies so first key point that i like about this mutual fund is that it gives you international diversification especially across large cap so this is the first key point second key point that it has a good balance of aggressive and defensive stocks so it looks like that people managing this mutual fund are doing a sensible jobs in terms of hedging the risk so this is point 2 the third key point is that this seems like a growth focused mutual fund for example if you take a look at the overall portfolio you can go here and check it that 22% is foreign investment holdings 70% are indian stocks and large cap is almost 60% mid caps and small caps are being balanced out so from that particular perspective this is a slightly aggressive mutual fund and if you have a slightly longer holding period 3 to 5 years time then this seems like a decent mutual fund so now let me also show you some numbers for example if you take a look at the trailing returns for this particular fund whether it's on one day one week three months six months one year three five seven ten years basis and compare it to s&p 500 or other equity flexi cap why are we comparing it to other equity flexi cap because this is a category of fund in which parag parek flexi cap fund currently lies so in most occasions it has done better than the market and it has definitely done better than its competitors now let me very quickly move on to a mid cap mutual fund and here my pick would be access mid cap mutual fund on a side note there has been a lot of problems with the excess mutual fund house itself in case you do not know about it please go and read the news so there has been corporate governance issues with access but that does not discount the fact that access is a very big group and their mutual funds have reasonably done well at least majority of them Yes, in some mutual fund, some fund manager did some ghapla. That's a separate story altogether. But that does not mean that all Axis mutual funds are bad. So very quickly, what does Axis mid-cap mutual fund comprises of? So these are the type of companies that Axis mid-cap mutual fund holds. They seem to be slightly more biased towards finance-oriented stocks. So that's a double-edged sword because if the market starts giving a return, then finance stocks are going to outperform the market. But in case a market correction or market crash happens, then of course finance stocks are going to get beaten. So please remember that that in a growing economy, investing in these type of funds make a lot of sense. But if the economy is going down a dole and if it is not doing well, then it's a problem. The second key point is that in the last couple of years, the mid cap and small caps have underperformed the market. So recovery is going to come at some stage. So it's a timing oriented game as well. That if the mid caps and small caps start rising, then a fund like Axis Mid Cap Mutual Fund is going to perform. But yeah, taking a look at the overall portfolio of this mutual fund, the overall split of the companies looks sensible. So you could consider doing further research on it. So let us very quickly compare this fund's performance against the benchmark, which is Nifty 50 index, and other similar funds. So here you will see, and you will find it very surprising that so three-month performance have been worse compared to 150 mid-cap TRI. Here six-month performance has been better, but one-year performance almost same, three-year almost same, five-year almost same, seven-year slightly better, ten. year almost the same then why is it that i'm rating this fund positively simply because of the fact that here you are comparing it to 150 mid cap tri and if you take a look at access mid cap fund it has a portion dedicated to small cap funds also and for the last two years entire small cap and mid caps have been badly beaten down in fact they are still trading very low so whenever the small cap and mid cap start doing well this type of fund is likely to do better now comes the third and final fund which is the sbi small cap fund i wanted to pick a small cap fund to discuss with you so let me very quickly show you some data around sbi small cap fund and if you start comparing it to nifty one month it has done better it has done better on a three month basis on a six month basis on a one year basis on a two year basis on a five year basis so it has consistently beaten the market and they are doing something good but again please go back to that concept of beta that since it's a small cap fund of course it is supposed to beat the market so there is nothing magical that is happening here it is just that there is higher unit of risk involved So this is point one. Point two is that if we compare it to peers, has it done better? So let me present some very quick analysis here. So you can see the comparison of the peers as well. So relatively speaking, on a three-year, five-year basis, it seems to be doing well, and even on a one-year basis, it seems to be doing well. So overall, it looks like a sensible fund. So let us very quickly take a look at the portfolio split of this fund, and you will see companies like Blue Star, V Guard. These are all good companies. Sheila Foams. It does mattresses. I'll make a separate video on this. This stock is already on my list. So I will dissect this stock in detail. So the overall portfolio looks good. 
Now, very important set of disclaimers before you start acting on this advice. Number one, I have already shared the entire framework. Please go use the Excel spreadsheet. Please identify your risk profile, your holding period of these different assets, and then only accordingly take positions. I have narrowed down a lot of work for you, but little bit of work you still need to do. So that is one. Second key thing, whatever three mutual funds I spoke about today, they are slightly more aggressive. And I am an aggressive investor. So I would usually invest in small cap, mid cap companies. I will buy internationally tech companies etc etc so this style of investing might not make sense for you and therefore all these three funds might be pointless to you so in that respect you should go and only invest in large cap mutual funds so please do not do lump sum investments on these mutual funds and final 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 point that the nature of these mutual funds their mutual fund manager might also change they might start taking some weird bets i do not know from time to time i will analyze all these mutual funds and i will keep on updating all of you but to cut the long story short please keep a track of wherever you are investing your money at least open up read about whether any material changes are taking place in that fund and accordingly restructure your portfolio thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon so we talked about uh, not only three funds but a lot of things uh related to the funds belonging to the similar category similar uh, fund category or uh, what could be the factors uh, which if changed could impact the performance of the funds like change change in the fund manager or uh, change in the investing uh, ideology or start taking uh, debts or uh, you know doing that stuff uh these things are to be constantly tracked if you are planning to invest in uh, any of the mutual funds but uh, yeah th there are some uh, trusted and uh, high rated mutual funds who have been performing well and are trusted most but still uh, the things need to be tracked time to time at least uh, on annually or uh, by annually basis but it was a good video we are going to check out some other videos as well till then please subscribe to our channel and uh, i'll see you in the next video till then take care bye bye